I am one of those people that does not like the sound of their own voice. Hello everyone, Michelle here and I'm back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. But today the format is going to be a little different. I am going to just be doing a knit and chat. Um, of course, this can be crochet and chat, weave and chat, spin and chat. Just grab a project um, and just chat with me. I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while. Um, I'm usually a pretty structured person when it comes to my YouTube videos, but I enjoy watching crochet and chat and knitting and chat videos, so I figured that I would do one as well. Um, yeah, so it's a bit hot in here because whenever I film a YouTube video, I always have to turn off the, um, the AC unit because it just makes a lot of noise. So <laughs> yeah, so if I start sweating or glistening, as I like to say, um, just never mind me. It's just, it's a really, really hot day uh, here in North Carolina. So um, the project that I am working on today, it is by Lion Brand and it is the their uh, diagonal blanket. Pretty much, y'all, it's like making a dishcloth. Um, it's pretty much the same pattern. It's a free pattern. And I am just using up some scrap yarn that I have. It's here in my lovely um, yarn bowl. And yeah, so I am just working with some scrap yarn that I had. This is I Love This Yarn. And I believe that's the pink colorway. And I'm debating on whether I want to use... Um, the black and white colors or do I want to use the rest of the yarn that I have from the Joanna Fig Twist. So this is going to be a great stash buster project. Also the pattern itself is super easy to remember and of course uh, as usual I will leave the link uh, to the description box. Leave the link in the description box below. And so for this I'm using a size 7 knitting needle which is a 4.5 millimeter. Uh, circular needle and of course these are my chagus um i love my chagu needles but i would love to try some other type of needles as well so if you all have any suggestions on some other um knitting needles or preferably some interchangeable needles would be great and even more so some wooden needles would be great because i've tried to crochet or i've tried to knit rather um with like silk yarn and really like slippery type of yarn and it just doesn't like my metal needles. So if you all can recommend an interchangeable set that's wooden, that would be perfect, perfect. All right, so um, let's see, what else do I wanna talk about? This is like so weird for me, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna be working on this and I'm also gonna be using my Knit Picks uh, needle finder or Knit Picks pattern finder and here it is i love it and this is awesome it's kind of like a little book and like i said i got this from actually i think i may have ordered this from amazon i think knit picks has a um has an amazon channel or an amazon um, storefront so basically you just take it and you clip it to the other end like so and then you can stand it up if you want to. And then it also has these like magnetic bars that you can put on there. Love those. And this is a free pattern, so you know, I don't mind sharing. It's a really simple pattern by Lion Brand. But I love it because you can like move the, um, move the metal, the uh, magnetic piece down as you go. So I do really like that. All right, oh, and I got my uh, new uh, compression gloves. So I ended up having to get these from Joann's because what had happened was I ordered some from Amazon like almost a month ago and I guess apparently it got lost. So now I have an extra pair. Um, when I was in Joann's, I bought the small size and I had ordered the medium size from Amazon and it turns out the small size actually works better for me. So 
I don't know what I'm going to do with these. Um, but these are the Stress Relief Gloves by Lion Brand. And yeah, they're great for me because I deal with a lot of pain in my fingers um, when I am knitting and crocheting. And actually right now I've got what's called Trigger Finger, which is just a really weird name. But basically like my finger, it bends and then it gets stuck. And I don't know if that comes from knitting and crocheting so much or if I'm sleeping weird. Like, I really don't even know where that comes from. If you've ever had trigger finger before, let me know for sure. So today has been a really good day. Um, I did my French lesson today, which I always enjoy. And this weekend, I actually went to the beach with my in-laws and we went to Atlantic Beach and we had an amazing time. Um, there was lots of waves and we played in the water and the sand. And of course, I took my yarn with me. I decided to knit this time on the beach um, just because I already had this project going. And yeah, so I had an excellent, excellent time and uh, we definitely are gonna go again. And so for this project, it's pretty simple, just simple knit stitches, but I just finished up another project where I had to knit and purl. And when it comes to knitting, I have taught myself how to flick. And if you all wanna see a really good tutorial, there's a video by Kristen Lair of Villain Bond, and I will leave that in the description box below where she talks about flicking. So I can flick while knitting, but the thing is I'm trying to work on flicking while um, purling. That is so difficult for me. I just, I'll get there. And so if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, there are several ways that knitters knit. Um, there's, you know, continental, there's English style, you know, where you throw, um, and then there's flicking and I'm sure there are some other ones, but those are the main ones and flicking is a little bit faster. So that is what I'm trying to do. And I've definitely gotten a lot better at it. That's for sure. So I really like it. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk to you all about today is using like one skein projects and for myself, like I have a ton of one skein projects or just one skein colorways, as you all can see here, just one skein because for whatever reason, when I was buying yarn, I did not buy like sweater quantities or anything like that. I just bought one skein here and there. And so I'm really trying to use up my uh, one skein projects. And so, or use up the one skein colorways that I have on one skein projects. And so I've been making like a lot of cows and um, things like that. I might make some hats, but you're just gonna see a lot of one skein projects coming up. And I think another thing too is here in North Carolina, it's like we don't get a lot of cold months. Um, sometimes it can be hot way until October and November. And so I really don't have a lot of sweater weather. <laughs> I, I really don't have a lot of uh, time to uh, even wear sweaters and it's just too hot to be making a sweater. So I think I might try making up some cardigans. I do really enjoy making cardigans, um, but we'll see, we'll see. So it's really, hard because right now a lot of people are having sales uh, I know that knit picks and um, we crochet they're having like a huge summer sale right now and I'm so tempted to buy a lot of yarn um, but I'm really trying to stash bust and use what I have that isn't to say that I won't buy some yarn that's on sale so we'll see we'll see I'm, I'm trying to be good and also, if you have any one skein project ideas, whether it be knitting or crochet, I would love to know. And I think it's so important to like make what you want and make what you love and to not feel pressured to make things. 
because there's a lot of popular uh, crochet and knit designers out there. And particularly in the knitting world, there's just certain patterns out there that it seems like everybody and their grandma is making. And, you know, you kind of feel left out if you're not making like the latest sweater pattern or, um, I don't know, just some of the things that are popular out there. You kind of feel like, oh, well, you know, maybe I should be doing that. But my thing is, is, you know, don't feel pressure to, um, make the latest and greatest and most popular thing just because everyone else is doing it. Just kind of do what you love. And I think that is so important because I think that, at least for me, that can lead to knitting and crochet insecurity when, you know, you kind of feel like, oh, well, I'm not talented enough to crochet or knit that particular thing. Um, I think when it comes to crochet, I'm pretty, I feel pretty good about it, you know. Uh, there's always a new technique, but for the most part with crochet, I feel pretty confident. But y'all, when it comes to knitting, oh my gosh, I'm not that confident when it comes to knitting. And, you know, I can knit and purl and make one right, make one left. Um, slip, slip, knit, you know, like the basic knitting uh, stitches, but when it comes to like the intricate stuff, oh my gosh, I do not know how to do that. Like, uh, like lace work and, um, oh, what is it? Is it intarsia? There's some other stuff, but when it gets into like the really intricate knitting patterns, like I'm just not that great. And so it's like, oh, I want to be making that stuff, but you know, I really have to work on it. But at the same time, I can't dwell on it because if you do dwell on it, at least for me, then that can bring knitting insecurities. And I want to enjoy knitting. I want to enjoy crocheting, but I already enjoy crocheting. So that's not an issue, but I want to enjoy knitting and I want to be doing it for me. So that kind of leads into something else that I wanted to talk about is just insecurities in general about when it comes to knitting and crocheting and particularly just being on YouTube and social media in general. Um, I think that, you know, you can really set yourself up for certain insecurities if you're constantly scrolling and comparing yourself to others and, you know, that person's videos are better, that person's IG page looks better and I think sometimes you just have to like take a break from looking at all of that um, because you know, you'll start to feel bad about yourself. And I think for me, like I've been on YouTube since 2015, which is crazy. Uh, August 2015 to be exact. And you know, there's been a lot of changes with YouTube over the years. That's for sure. And not only that, but there's been a lot of changes within the yarn community. And you'll hear me say yarn community because a lot of people say knitting community, but I don't think that that includes everybody. You know, I, I know what people mean when they say knitting community, but I like to say yarn community because crocheters, spinners, weavers, they're all in the yarn community. So I think um, in the yarn community, you really have to be careful about what you say, what you do, what you post, because as much as I love being a part of this community, we are a sensitive bunch. <laughs> and I say we, cause I don't want to uh, single out anybody or anything like that. But I think that the knitting community or the yarn community in general can be a bit sensitive. And it's like, there's always something going on, you know, somebody said this, somebody said that, and you know, it can be a bit negative sometimes, which is why uh, sometimes I will even take a break from the yarn community and, you know, just stay off of Instagram or stay off of YouTube just for a minute, you know, um, just to take a break. And it's really not that bad on YouTube. In fact, it's really not bad at all. On YouTube it's more so like Instagram where I notice a lot of 
the negativity. And, you know, I just try to like stay away from that um, the best I can. And so in terms of YouTube, because I know that the yarn community can be a bit sensitive sometimes, I stay away from certain topics and I just don't express my opinions on those topics because I don't want to offend anybody. And that's just me in general. Like that's not just related to yarn. That's me in everyday life. I'm like that one that just wants to keep the peace and you know, I don't want to start any trouble, anything like that. So, you know, I just kind of keep my opinions to myself. Um, especially when it comes to like the negativity in uh, the yarn community. But I am so very happy of, um, or happy with the viewers and the subscribers that I've had over these last seven going on eight years. Uh, I adore my subscribers and I just, I really appreciate um, people viewing my videos and sharing my videos and making comments on my videos like I love 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 reading the comments it's like one of my favorite things and when it comes to YouTube like I enjoy the whole process um setting up to film isn't always like the most fun but um I enjoy the editing process and I enjoy making the thumbnails and um learning how to use editing software and all of that stuff it's just a lot of fun for me. So I really do enjoy that. But it can be difficult sometimes because I am one of those people that does not like the sound of their own voice. I do not like the sound of my own voice. And once I edit a video and I upload the video and publish it to YouTube, I do not watch that video again. No, 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 no. Um, I will watch it over and over again during the editing process just to make sure that everything sounds good and, and stuff like that. But it's weird for me. It's so weird for me to like, even like if I'm scrolling through YouTube and I see my thumbnail, it's like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. So is there anybody else out there um, that really don't like the sound of their own voice? I feel like that's so weird. But I'm definitely um, one of those. And so, like I said, I don't watch my videos again. But I do appreciate you all watching them. And you would think after being on YouTube for seven years, you would think that I would be more confident. But y'all, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I will say that it takes a lot of, um, oh, what's the word? It takes a lot of motivation to uh, to get on YouTube and, and not pick yourself apart and to not be difficult on yourself. Because I have to admit, like, in the past, that is something that has kept me from uploading. You know, it's like, like I'm too concerned with, oh, my hair is not right today. Or, um, you know, nothing I wear looks good today. Or... I don't have enough projects finished for today or, you know, just negative, negative thoughts and, oh, well, you know, I don't think I'm looking right on camera today or how do I look to other people and those negative things. And, you know, I really just try to press record, set up, press record because I do love the process and I really do miss YouTube when I don't upload. And so... Um, even to this day, seven years later, I get so nervous before pressing the, uh, publish button. And I was talking to my friend Delilah of Delightfully Stitched about this, how, you know, right before you upload a video to YouTube, you have the option of private, um, unlisted and published. And I always get so nervous nervous to press the publish button because I know that all of my subscribers are going to be notified and all I can do is laugh at myself. All I can do is laugh at myself. So if you are a YouTuber or content creator in general, whether that be TikTok, Instagram, um, whatever, YouTube, 
Let me know if you have any struggles or if you have any insecurities when it comes to um, uploading content. Because even like when it comes to Instagram, like I don't really post a lot of selfies and things like that, but um, I am trying to get better. And I'm definitely trying to get better. So um, let's see. Another thing too that I worry about is I am a lot quieter in person than I am like on YouTube or um, at craft festivals and things like that. And I'm genuinely excited. Like I love being um, on YouTube and it's something like, I don't know, when I sit down and I start talking, I just get really excited and I really do genuinely enjoy it. But in person, like I'm a lot quieter. I'm not shy, but I am a lot quieter. So if you ever catch me at the store, at Walmart, whatever, and I'm just not like, hi, <laughs> that's generally not how I am. And you know, I feel bad about it, but I think it's easier for me because I'm in the house, I'm by myself, and I'm just looking into a camera lens and just talking. And so it's easy for me to be a little bit more relaxed. Um, but when I am in a crowd, sometimes I can be like super quiet and super introverted. Um, I will say when I go to craft festivals and fiber festivals, I get really excited about seeing people who have been following me on Instagram or subscribe to me on YouTube and they're so excited to meet me and I'm so excited to meet them and I think that that just like really gets me hyped up but when I get home from like a two to three day fiber festival my my introvert battery is drained and I just need to like take some time to let it refill. So if there's any introverts out there, uh, definitely let me know and let me know if you have any of those same struggles. I would love to know. So yeah, um, I'm checking my time because this thing is probably going to cut off like around 30 minutes. So, you know. Um, I do love my Canon camera and if y'all are interested, I think I might do like a YouTube setup just like so just do like a tour of my setup and everything that I have going on here. Uh, let's see, let's see what else would I, would I want to talk about. So I think another thing too is, is when you're on YouTube, like there's this constant pressure to watch the numbers. You know, it's like why do I only have, I don't know, 30 subscribers or 300 subscribers and this person, you know, they've got 10,000 subscribers and why can't I have that? And I think if you're someone who's feeling that insecurity or feeling that way, just know that there are people who loyally will watch you and just try to cater to those people because they're so important and they are the ones that's going to keep you going. Um, comparison is a huge hurdle and just don't compare yourself to people. Just, you know, press record and upload your videos. And I feel like if people, you know, if people like what you have to say, then they will continue to watch. Um, and I think also there is this pressure sometimes to like have, 1 million things done during every video. You got five finished projects. You got six whips and you know, it's just like you've got all these um, new things that you bought and you feel like you have to have that during every single video. And it's not good. It's not good. Show what you have. Talk about what you want to talk about. But don't feel pressured to have six different sweaters knitted every week <laughs> or six different uh, shawls crocheted every week. Um, yeah, don't do that to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. So that's definitely something um, that, you know, I, I think people should know. Um, let's see. I think another thing for me is after being on YouTube for so long, it's really hard for me to like plug things. Even like monetary links and stuff like that, 
it's so weird to me because I would never want anybody to think like, oh, no, here she go. Here she about to sell something again. <laughs> I would not. I don't want people to, to, to um, think that. But, you know, there are certain things that I do with my channel. Like, for example, I do not allow mid-roll ads. And those are the ads that come in the middle of the video. And I don't allow those because for me, if I'm watching a YouTube video and I'm vibing with that person, I don't want my experience to be cut in the middle by ads. And you know, it's different. Of course, there's gonna be ads at the beginning and there's gonna be ads at the end, but I don't want people's experience to be cut in the middle. Um, and I know in terms of like monetization and stuff like that, that does hurt me by cutting out the mid-roll ads. But for me, the viewer experience is more important. So, you know, I think that's more important, which is why I don't allow um, those ads. So yeah, that's just, that's just all part of being um, a YouTuber. And it's just weird for me to even like talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but you know, I do have links if you would like to support my channel but it's never, ever, ever any pressure. I think that your view is more important. The fact that you're still watching is more important um, to me than that. So yeah, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. let's see, what else do I wanna talk about? Yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much what I wanna talk about. It's just like YouTube insecurities, social media insecurities and different things like that. Um, if you are thinking about starting a YouTube channel, don't chase the money. You're not going to get rich overnight. To me, it's more important to build up your, your viewers and show them that you care about them and focus on them. And then those things that you want, I feel like they will come. And I have to take my own advice <laughs> because, you know, it's easy to like talk about it, but you know, are you really doing it um, in your, in your real life? And so, yeah, that's that. And also, um, let's see, I hope my camera's not about to run out. But also, I feel like there's a lot of people who um, receive negative feedback about being on YouTube. I was talking to a good friend of mine, and she was saying how when she, you know, she, she has a YouTube channel and people are very negative. And not like her subscribers or her viewers, but people in her real life her family, her friends, and that's just not cool. And I think that a lot of times people give you a hard time because they want to be doing what you're doing. They don't have the courage to do what you're doing. And so instead of supporting you, they give you a hard time. And I just, I cannot stand for that. Uh, me, I'm very blessed to have a large support group with friends and family, and I, I feel really happy about that. But I just think it's terrible that someone would want to get on YouTube and, and show their projects and their knitting and their crocheting. And then you have close friends and family that you feel like are supposed to support you. They're trying to bring you down. And all I can say is don't let them bring you down. They just, most of the time, they just want to be where you are and they don't have that courage that you have to press record and upload and be on YouTube and social media in general. And I feel like if you have beautiful things to show, show the world and trust me, people, there are people out there that's going to appreciate the beautiful things that you crochet and you knit. So that is all that I want to talk to you about, about today. Um, I will leave the links in the description box below to anything that I'm using here in the video. Uh, if you want to check that out. Um, also check out my YouTube community tab because I ask a lot of fun questions there about knitting, crocheting, weaving, spinning, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so definitely check out my community tab. Yeah, I think that is all. So thank you all so much for watching. This was fun for me. Um, I hope it was for you too. So thank you all so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And yeah, also you can find me on social media as Queen's Yarn Boutique. I think today I was able to get like three or four rows done. I just enjoy talking with you all. So I, I don't even know where I started, <laughs> but I do believe I got about three or four rows done. So that is cool. 
So yeah, until next time. Bye.